Welcome to Show the Cigar Guy. So tonight we're going to be smoking the Opus X Angel Share. So this cigar right here is part of the Opus X series. And speaking of the Angel Share itself, its significance is actually referred to the fire that happened in 2012. Yep on the farm for the Fuentes on the plantation. And they had this crop that was aged since the 1940s and 1950s that they were saving for a 100 year anniversary that had gotten burned. So just from the smoke from that fire, had basically made it evaporate, just like as of any type of wine or any kind of spirit such as bourbon or whiskey, usually you would have your angel share that evaporates and that the angels take with them. So also along with the Angel Share Opus X. The wrapper itself is the Dominican Sun Grown. The binder and the filler are both from the Dominican. So this size cigar is a Churchill. It is a 7x48, so it's a 7 inches by 48 ring gauge. I would say, George, what do you think? This this would probably take us a good while to go through. It's pretty well packed, it feels like, too. I mean, I can make a Churchill last three hours. I smoke really slow. So. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, easily an hour and a half to two hours. If somebody smokes a little fast, I would think. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I would say something like this. Depending on, I would say around an hour and a half or almost two hours, depending on how packed it is. But just by judging by how dense it feels, it definitely would. Yeah, it's well it's well packed. No, of course, no soft spots. It's, uh, it's an Opus X. Nice oils, beautiful yeah. color. Just, ugh, just nice cigar all around. What you'd expect. And George here is pairing it with, what type of red wine is that too that you have? Um, it's a medium dry, full body uh, red blend. Mm -hmm. We just had a, we just had nice burgers on the grill, uh, right. wagyu uh, beef, very nice, and I like a little red wine with that. And just decided to carry on with that when we smoked the cigar. Absolutely. Uh, and I just had some coffee that George had uh, made for me, and excellent. It's just a nice night out. Temperatures right now are probably like, what in the mid seventies to around almost eighty degrees. I would probably, say. Yeah, but I'd say yes, yeah, 70, 73, 75 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. yeah nice. Yeah. A little bit of humidity, but not too bad. Slight breeze in the air, which is always helpful when you're smoking a cigar out in this kind of environment. So I'm gonna give this a guillotine cut. And George. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. And for this, I'm gonna light a cedar spill, piece of cedar, and I'm gonna use matches. Usually the cedar, whenever I light it up for the cigar, it usually enhances a lot more of the flavor profile onto the cigar itself, onto a lot of the notes. There we go. Tastes almost chocolatey from the, the, the dry draw itself. A little bit of that reason, but I almost got a little bit of what do they say? Uh, hay and uh, that nice barnyard, a little bit of that barnyard smell, not too too much, but mm -hmm. just nice, very nice. A little raisin, a little current. Are you doing this? Bill? Right. Yep, there you go. I'm going to use that one. You can you can use the you know uh, what? I'm gonna, thing. um, as much as I Appreciate that. I'm gonna just take these right up. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly. I'm gonna get a little toast, but be careful with this uh, quad flame. So, yeah. yeah it's, it's nice. Nice. Just gotta make sure we don't burn the wrapper. Yeah. Get a little toast. A little bit of distance yeah. there. Yeah. Give it a little uh, prime it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful flavor profile to this. It's got a lot of smoothness. It's almost like that's it. Mm -hmm. The it's very like... first. There's no one. Um, there's well when you smoke it really high. There's no one. Um, you know. So, oh, you gotta wait. To, you could, you know. You light it and then you gotta wait the first inch. And just, right. If you if you light this cigar properly and uh, don't burn it, char it right. from the very first draw. Mm -hmm. Right to the last, it's just, it's perfect. There is no, you know, there is no, let it get to the first third or 
best that first inch. Right. It's, it's beautiful from the first. All the way from yep. the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. Definitely notice the creaminess. Yep. And uh, definitely take notice in the, it's almost like a very mellow flavor. It's almost like a buttery Chardonnay type of flavor profile to it, just about. Almost a very like smooth. For any Chardonnay lovers, I can see Chardonnay also going very well with this. Mm. Yeah, if you like that buttery Chardonnay, like you said, like, uh, yeah. What's that? The most buttery Chardonnay I've ever had is that one you, you see all the time, Clos de Bois. Okay. Clos de Bois, which is everywhere. You know, it's uh, very buttery in mm. the finish. Yeah, very buttery. It's very, uh, like, an oaky uh, note to it, too. It also pairs up really nice with the cigar. It's really underrated because you don't hear too much about Chardonnay and cigars so much. Mm. You always think of red wines. And uh, Chardonnay is another uh, wine of, you know, kind of expanded my palate into, and it's a really unique wine to pair up with different cigars, especially lighter cigars such as this, too. Yeah, this is, um, um, I'm trying to even remember if I've ever had the, I've had plenty of Opus X. I'm trying to remember if I've had the Angel Share, but it's, um, it's like it's been described to me. It's very much a, a, a similar profile to the actual Opus X itself, mm -hmm. but like it's creamier and more mild. Right, you know, and uh, not as much power and uh, spice in the retro hail, or like that white pepper you get a little bit of in, in the retro hail. This is uh, it's much, much smoother. It is. Let me try a little bit of uh, a sip of coffee too along with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is mm -hmm. nice. It's very relaxing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the key things about cigars too is that. The experience, not just about what exactly you're smoking, just also your experience having a nice night, nice weather. Just listen. The bugs, just by the little bit, just what's around you, just kind of like, it just helps just incorporate everything that's around you. Which is really yeah. nice about cigars. You know, it's really peaceful. It's like meditation, almost. I see it, it is. Every day. Yeah. Yep. Very relaxing. Just relaxing in the smoke, and it's nice. Uh, yeah, and the weather's perfect. I know, um, uh, you know, like a lot of a lot of people are, I don't I don't smoke inside. Um, I always smoke outside. So um, you become uh, if I can't find a place a bar that allow me to smoke, um, I'm pretty much not smoking in the winter time. Right. But however, like you said about the weather, I especially here, you know, it's the Carolinas and and then uh, Florida and just so on. I mean, we get so humid at night sometimes. Oh yeah. People say, well, what do you mean? It's warm? No, no, it's even almost too humid to smoke. It's just very uncomfortable. I, it I is. can't stand that. And, People, I've I've found you know it, it makes sense in my cigar in a very very humid evening. It, it, you know no matter how well I've done aging it mm -hmm. and, it, and smoking it at the right time, um, it, it's a different smoke because of the moisture in the air. It is, and, and, then, uh, and there there are times where I've actually had a couple cigars where I've actually tried to light the cigar by using matches, and the matches only would strike because the humidity in the air is so thick it's almost at 90 something to almost 100 yeah. percent and you can see the, the the fog in the air basically just the, the rain evaporating because you get almost every day you get a downpour of rain mm -hmm. a lot of times especially during the, the like just about a little bit over a week ago like last week we had really nice weather really you know low humidity which is very rare and i mentioned that in some of my videos that you get such you know low humidity for around here which is unusual but we'll take it because pretty soon, you know, which the humidity sort of kick up a little bit now. It's, you know, temperatures around 90 degrees or so. But, you know, pretty soon, coming July, it's going to come back. It's going to come back hard. You know, mm -hmm. wouldn't doubt it. You know, the average high throughout July here is what, like 90 to 95, yep. I would say. Yep. And the humidity is always hovering around 80%, which is pretty significant it uh, is. with a 90 degree temperature. Yeah. Yep. You know, bring it, and all that stuff. Why, why is it that I always seem to mention the weather a lot of times into before I smoke and I light up. It's not just because I want to give you guys a perspective with also outside, but it also kind of gains another variable. Weather plays an important role with many things that we do, and cigars is one of them. I mean, you think, and I mentioned in some of my winter videos that, you know, a lot of cigars seem to peel more. It's not because there's something wrong with the humidor, or if that ever happens to you, that, you know, if anything ever happens, even if you ever had it happen, like on a dry winter day, you take the cigar out of a humidor where your humidity level is around 70 percent the temperature is about 70 degrees in that humidor and you take it outside and it might be really nice and sunny and it might be even a cool night and hanging out with your friends and it's like 40 something degrees and that dry that dryness outside which just calls the wrapper and everything just to suddenly just peel apart 
and almost like, it looks like one of those cartoon cigars where it just kind of yeah. explodes at the end. Yeah. Yeah. It's reminded me of one of the funniest things I've ever saw in all the years. You know, it, those you remember walking through, sitting there when you're waiting in the line before um, self checkout. Right. You're standing there in line waiting through to get to the grocery store. So you're looking around, you're reading all the, uh, just looking at the headlines in those ridiculous uh, magazines like the National Enquirer. Right. And I'll never forget the one that said, Man's Head Blown Off by Trick Cigar or <laughs> something like that. And it all, I just laughed. But it's almost like that. I remember the first time when it was really humid out. And, right. uh, and, my, and I had been, um, my cigars, you know, I, I keep up on my humidity, I take good care of my cigars, I take it out there. And I, I don't know how long into the smoking I was where I just noticed it. It was behaving like it had been over humidified. And I knew that wasn't the case, but it, it, there was so much humidity in the air that mm -hmm. um, it was smoking completely different. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, um, it was nuts. But, uh, and of course, the comfort level. I mean, if you're, if it's, if it's free, some people, you know, I, I can't do that. I can't go outside and bundle up and wrap myself up and just to smoke a cigar. It's almost like I feel like I'm smoking a cigarette. You know, when you get a Jones for a cigarette, right? You, you know, you'll rush out in the rain, you know, under the, um, just to get a few puffs and so on. And right. I, I can't do that with a cigar. Yeah. If I, if I can't, um, take, you know, even if it's a short cigar, a short smoke or something, at least 20, 25 minutes or if I can't take the time it takes to smoke it properly, I don't want to smoke it because it's just that's it, that's the whole idea for me. Of smoking a cigar is not just the cigar; it's the experience. You know? Exactly. You know, and, uh, so. be able to uh, relax and be able to enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it is. I mean, otherwise, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, and you know, I just don't know. Ever want to get to that point with a cigar where I'm, I'm um, jonesing for one so bad that it's like, you know, yeah, let me go outside and just take right. a few puffs real quick because not. Now it's all, it's about something else, isn't it? Right. right. It just becomes like you're basically power smoking it, or sometimes just speed smoking, and get, you get your nicotine loose. fix. You may may say you, you light it, but you're getting a nicotine fix. Right. No, I mean, you know, I'm not nothing against people who need a nicotine fix if that's what you want, but I just don't. That's not what I smoke cigars for. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I used to have days where when I was working, um, this is many years ago, just 2000, you know, 2014 around 2015. One of my best friends, Bill, who's been in my videos previously. He had lived within a, you know, not even a half a mile from where I worked at. And it was an easy walk across to another complex, across a, another, like, road I had to go across. Going to a little cut through we made from the woods behind that building into his backyard. We should just hang out, play music. And it was like meditation. We just kind of, like, just sit down, relax, listen to just some, like, you know, random, mostly 80s music was our, our, our preferred, you know, common genre. And just, you know, that listen to baseball and just sit down at a little bit of lunch and something to kind of hang out, have coffee and just talk about our day halfway. And that was like our meditation. I'll tell my boss, it was supposed to be 45 minutes we had to have. But I just tell him, like, listen, I'm going to stay an extra 15 minutes. That's why I had it just a simple, perfect hour. It was less for me to actually think about. This is why I picked up from my desk at 1230. I came back at 130. I didn't have to worry about doing too much math. And that was one of the things about... The cigars it just helped me relax it was enjoyable sometimes you get days where it's like 70 degrees sunny and just relaxing it's just a nice experience overall oh yeah yeah and it slows you down mm -hmm. if you allow it if you if you if you allow it to you sit down relax you light up the cigar you know the whole thing the first draw the cut is, if you allow it it'll just take you away and just yep. and next thing you know you just you know the, the day's worries you know it's uh we used to call my um after a rough day, maybe you were driving 10 hours, or you're doing this, you drive a truck, whatever, you're yep. traveling, whatever. Or for me, I used to travel a lot. I spent half my life in airports, traveling all the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, at the end of the day, finally get to the hotel, you know, you sit at the bar and, you know, sit down and just have a, like, my, I call it my dust cutter. Right. You know? He's that cowboy, comes in with his, you know, his duster jacket on, gets in the bar, he's been driving all day, he has that first whiskey and, yeah, cuts the dust, yeah. so to speak. And, and that's what it was like, just that whiskey, that cigar. You know, all that crap that went on at the airport, the trouble you had, and they yeah. lost your luggage, and the and the, the rude girl behind the counter, and you know, or uh, the ticket agent, whatever. It's just you know, okay, I, yeah. I got this. <laughs> you know? it, it, it was like last week for me. I drove down from Maryland and New Jersey, and uh, part of that drive, I sat in you know, good five, five and a half hours of traffic outside of Washington D.C. Which, if anybody who's watching this has ever sat down in major city traffic like that, even like L.A. or New York or Philadelphia and so forth, Chicago. You know, the, the traffic around there just kind of drives you kind of nuts after a while. And once you get that release away from it, sometimes you can light up a cigar if you can in your car, if you have a sunroof. Sometimes mm -hmm. one of the things I do is I stop on the side of like where, you know, 95 is. It's a nice day. It's a rest area. It's pretty decent, you know, pretty nice rest area. Virginia has some really nice rest areas. Just to kind of go, it's like little miniature parks. And they have like little, believe it or not, they have like one in North Carolina actually has like a stream and a waterfall. 
Plus, it's, that's what the thing is. They experience that. You know, it's a nice, peaceful thing. Just kind of get away. Just sit outside. Have a, I usually get like a short cigar. Just kind of have that. I mean, my old car, I used to build. I used to smoke in it. My new car, I don't. But my my old car, I used to open up the sunroof, and I did it the first time. I was driving from my son's house in Maryland. I've sat in like about an hour's worth of traffic in Delaware on 95, and I'm like, you know what? The guy next to me was smoking in his car. I'm like, forget it. And I just had a cigar with me. Open up the sunroof, lit it up, and I'm like. This made this traffic jam a lot easier and a lot more relaxed. That's and, why you're always going to get the this, no, 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 from no on sunroof option always. Yep. <laughs> and I got a sunroof in this car, so just in case. Yeah. Yeah. And there's other things out there you can actually use to actually, you know, kill the smoke odor in a lot of cars too. Yeah. This way it doesn't linger. That's oh, yeah. Good, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they got good stuff now. I mean, yeah. <laughs> mm. One yeah, of the things I'm, I'm sorry, but. Uh, uh -oh. You see that sound? Yeah. yeah, it's just luckily it's just a moth. See, I told you we shouldn't have killed that bug with my seeds. Yeah, that's one <laughs> thing about areas like here in the south and the southeast. You get a lot of huge bugs. You get a lot of like beetles and pond meadow bugs, as they call them. Yeah. The, uh, where they the, the roaches? I guess. Flying, flying, flying roaches. Flying yeah. American roaches, I think they're called, and they're like no lie, probably like almost half the width. I would say some of them I've seen almost like half the width of this huge like. Box like one I actually seen was almost the size of my cell phone one time last yeah. year. They're like sparrows it's instead of uh, beetles. They look like small birds. <laughs> right, and it's funny because like I tell like my friends and family up north. You know, up north you, you compare bug sizes to coin sizes. Here you compare it to the size of the fingers yeah. on your hand. Yeah, it's and, a five finger. It's a five finger. Yeah, yeah. Four finger, yeah. And I'll include in this video too, which is a case to give you a little bit of visualization. I took pictures of this bug that had these huge claws, and I looked at it and my. Like, all right, I got sandals on. I am not going to allow this thing to kind of roam around as we're doing this video. And, you know, basically this thing could easily grab my big toe and bite it. Actually, you'd probably just grab me by the toe and flip you that way and flip you that way. <laughs> He's big. You look like one of those things uh, on mutual loam. You know, the Goliath beetle, you know. Seriously. He's, yeah, it was, it, was, it was nasty looking. <laughs> yeah, and it was standing up like on had six legs, and the thing was like all arched up. And I'm like, that thing? I'm like, I was getting ready to kind of try and smash it with my sandal, and I'm like, that thing's like getting ready to attack me. Especially yeah. how you describe the uh, Black Widow. Yeah. Well, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get a finalization towards the end of the cigar. As you get near the label and everything, we'll do talk about different parts of it as we go on. I think the next step we gotta do is we forgot to bring out an ashtray, so that's gonna be our next step. We need to get an ashtray to put this into. So far, it, um, and I'm only a bit into it, but. Uh, Consistent, smooth, creamy, mm -hmm. enjoyable, just, uh, just nice, you know. Yeah, it's been really, really relaxing. Yeah, it's very relaxing. Almost like uh, now it sort of tastes a little bit somewhat sweet, subtle notes to it. Almost like a uh, the dead dry fruit, almost also like yeah. a dry fruit. All right, so cigar review time. So I made it down towards the, uh, towards the very. And here had a real light towards the end. It went out a little bit, so not too long ago. <laughs> I am about halfway done. <laughs> <laughs> so George is about halfway done. I'm almost down to the very bottom. So this cigar, from what I experienced from it, all the way throughout, had a lot of consistency. So the, the flavors mostly stayed within, mm -hmm. between, you know, having a lot of creaminess, a lot of buttery notes to it. Definitely has. Uh, a, sort of like some sweetness, definitely would say. Uh, definitely went very well with the coffee. I would definitely, you know, give that a whirl for uh, for this cigar. Even a, as I said before, even a nice Chardonnay, a nice white wine would go very well with this cigar. How was the wine with it for you? Mm. Very good. It's perfect. Um, did, uh, didn't overpower the wine. Even some I find sometimes, um, you know, a medium to full cigar or a good solid medium cigar. Um, even with a, a, a good full body cab, let's say, or something, the cigar can can overpower even a red wine, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, it's fine. It's a medium dry, full body, uh, like I said, a blend, red blend, and yeah, right. and they, they paired fine with this. I mean, I'm sure there's probably better, but I just, like you said, I had the wine. I had the wine with that nice, uh, why was it Wagyu beef? Uh, and I just decided to continue to smoke that. I can see, like you said, uh, a Chardonnay might work with this. And, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, and then, of course, there's always. I think the biggest, boldest wines out there are probably like uh, some of the California Zins. Oh, yeah. The, you know, the Red Zin from uh, up, up, up north, and uh, those are some big, bold wines. And, uh, what's another one? Uh, Malbec's big, and uh, some of the Argentinian wines, and Zins. No, not Zin. Uh, Shiraz. 
Shiraz is yeah, one of them. Yeah, spicy. Yeah, maybe that may be a little too much because the Shiraz is kind of spicy, and this is a little. It might. I mean, creamy, consistent, not overly complex. But I'm fine with that. I like a complex cigar, but it doesn't oh, yeah. have to be complex. If I like the flavor, and it's, that's the way it is the whole way through. I'm fine with that. Uh, mine picked up um, a bit of. Uh, as, as I would expect, I mean, it, 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 I think it's intentional that uh, it picked up uh, a bit. Of, it's picked up a bit of strength and just a little bit more um, spice in the in the retro hail. Uh, right. So yeah, it's a little more. The body's picked up a little. Uh, strength's picked up and body. Yeah. So. Definitely, uh, I would say it's definitely uh, starts off very mild and it continues on to be. It picks up, like you said, and it definitely becomes a little more of a medium body to it. Nothing too full body about it. I wouldn't say it was no. No, definitely not a full body cigar. For me and uh, my palate, it was a uh, solid medium right at the beginning. Right now, it's going uh, not full body, but it's going more to the full of medium side. You right. Know, it's like it's, it's gone full. And, uh, never say it was mild, it's, it was medium and now medium too full, not exactly medium full. But uh, yeah. And then, I mean, who knows? Maybe, you know, next, depending on the way it's been blended, who knows, you know, what's, what's coming up uh, next, though. So. But it reminds me typical too, like uh, with most of the Opus X I smoke, um, very just wonderfully, wonderful tasting cigar, not overly complex, very consistent, mm -hmm. excellent construction. You know. yeah. yeah. But uh, the Opus X from the beginning is, I think, a more full bodied cigar than the uh, Angel Share. So. Absolutely. The Angel Share is definitely a much uh, lighter smoke. I definitely would say it's definitely a uh, perfect kind of cigar to have uh, earlier part of the day. Yep. As for, you know, just having it at the end of the day, but also really good for the first cigar of the day. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, well, you see, that's where you, uh, this, if I were in, and I've been smoking since, I think I started, I smoked my first premium in, in 1995, on Sun Girl, and probably Cedar, Cedar Sleeve, uh, and I probably took that story a hundred times, and then for uh, the next few years, I smoked premiums on and off, and then I'd say it was about, uh, well, shoot, the next few years, probably the next 15 years. Oh, 2010 is when I got what I would say serious, where I started keeping s several humies and really branching out and trying a lot of different cigars, more Nicaraguans and Dominicans, and then I waited a long time before uh, I, 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 I waited till I, because um, you know, waited till I knew that I was getting genuine Cubans. You know, too many people that just the mystique gets them. They just doesn't matter how long they've been smoking. You know, the first thing they want to do is how do I get Cubans? How do right. I get Cubans? And, a lot of times those are the people who end up with a you know a box of fakes so yeah i waited quite a bit of time and like i said you know i'm in the printing industry so I'm pretty good at checking things out like that and uh and, uh, that's when i started branching on the cubans which i love cuban cigars i love nicaragua and i like the agonoso leaf uh, i love i love fuertes uh, i love cigars you know, yeah, just, just uh, in general yeah. all cigars that's why i try them all like, across the board yeah all my reviews are you know almost any cigar i can get my hands onto that i have that are in my humidor uh, especially, you know, working at a cigar store at Tinderbox, I, uh, if I see something new, I like to be able to go ahead and something that's rare that we only have very few of, I love to go ahead and give it a try and give it a whirl. Yeah, and this is, um, like you were saying, for me, first cigar of the day, um, if I smoke a cigar, um, too early afterwards, and um, even with coffee, this, that, I come out here in the morning sun, have coffee, paper, whatever, smoke my cigar, I, I want to go back to bed sometimes. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> a cigar like this is this is the type of cigar that uh, I would enjoy it, and uh, but it would be too much for me first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. if, uh, I don't smoke a lot of morning cigars anyway, but if I do, it's definitely, it's usually um, a nice, mild Connecticut. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, I do like a nice Connecticut every now and then. I like some of the Ecuadorian Connecticut's because they don't get that bitter taste right at the beginning. And... Um, so a nice smooth Connecticut, but even, even again, I don't smoke a lot because uh, it's a non-starter for me, believe it or not. Um, it just the, the chill I get from just you know I can't if I start my day with a cigar. Sometimes it's just uh, you know, it's if I have to get things done, it it, it doesn't it never starts. Like I said, it's a non-starter. Right. From there, it might be another cigar, it might beginning. be a nap, and then it might be some TV and <laughs> you know, some beer and you know whatever. But uh, yeah, this would definitely be too much for me first thing in the morning. Right. Like at midday uh, and uh, F, uh, you know dinner time after dinner smoke. But yeah, that's me though. That's my yeah. People say you know, I'm not a yard guy. Some guys you know they're, they're, they, oh, they yeah. have a yard gar or they're uh, you know without sitting in the yard Walking doing the their dog. dog or dog yeah, dog walkers or yep. whatever. And, uh, I've never been. I mean now I could see um, taking a nice walk and smoking a a, a, a cigar dog that I could see. But oh, I've yeah. never been a yard gar guy or a, a morning cigar guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm usually an afternoon to evening cigar. Yeah, right. Yeah, if I start my day like this, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I have, there's a million reasons why that project's sitting over there isn't going to get finished. Right. Yeah. 
and feel free to comment if you what you you should prefer morning evening afternoon you know let us know we're definitely curious but overall to get the cigar a uh, a score or for myself zero through ten uh i would like to get this one probably pretty much a uh let's say a, it's pretty solid I mean, yeah. it's pretty pretty good it's really hard to Distinguish. I know it's definitely down nine, which I'm going to say because I, I know I have a feeling you're going to say the same thing. But go ahead, I'll tell you. I would say at least a, a nine, nine point two. Yeah, I was, I was going to say nine. Yeah, nine, yeah. nine point two. Yeah, yeah, nine. Definitely a good scar. Definitely a great scar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's so many good ones out there nowadays too. You know, it's um, it's hard to distinguish sometimes. You have such a variety, yeah. different brands and different leaves and different tobaccos that are all involved. You get so many cigars are so complex. They have so many different. Uh, you know, so different tobaccos and their binders and their fillers, and you have so much to experience with and compare and contrast how the ones are very similar to one another. Yeah, but absolutely. yeah, and like and like you said too, uh, a lot of times in the morning I have something more mild to medium. Every once in a while I'll go for uh, maybe a Maduro just to kind of change things up. But a lot of times I uh, limit myself usually to a cigar in the morning, to maybe a cigar later on after dinner. In the evening, especially this time of the year, I mentioned all of my videos when it's hot outside. I try not to smoke a cigar when it's so hot and you're just out there just sweating the entire time. You're basically just down here, you know, especially in the southeast of the United States, you're basically sitting in a sauna while smoking a cigar is practically what you're doing in the yeah. middle of the day. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just not comfortable at all. I mean, it's a different kind of discomfort, but for me, it's I don't want to smoke a cigar on a day like a time like that any more than I want to smoke one, you know, when it's 20 degrees out, you know, or yeah. whatever. I just don't want to. It's a, I, even even with my uh, propane heaters I have here in the background, it's still not enough to keep me out there. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, anybody want to buy one cheap, just let me know. <laughs> just sit there and time. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, definitely um, not not a morning cigar for me. Um, uh, very yeah. good. I mean, it's just it's one thing. It's just it's. Just especially when you get to this level with Fuente, I mean the, the consistency. Oh and, yeah, uh, it's just it's just a nice cigar. You know, um, I really enjoy um, just to get off track of the Fuentes. Is I enjoy the, uh, the Cameroons the Fuente makes, the Hemingways, and right. you know, and the Don Carlos and uh, Don Carlos. I really definitely enjoy yeah, the what, Hemingway signatures one. Is kind of was a go-to for me for a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I just like the uh, the Tola, the shape, you know, the taper. Oh and, yeah, and just it's a nice Cameroon. And, and even uh, the the short stories are very popular. People yeah. come in and get them all the time. And they're great just for like you know just having a quick smoke mm. for a short period of time. I would say they normally last you between maybe thirty minutes, maybe a little bit more, depending on how, how your smoke speed is. I mean, yeah. here's a perfect example. I mean, my smoke speed is uh, you know much faster compared to yeah. some people. George, you smoke your cigars a little much you know at a different different rate than I, I do, do yep. at a slower rate, and everybody smokes at different speeds. I even know people that even smoke cigars much faster than I do, believe it or not. I there was a guy that. That would come into a cigar lounge where I was in New Jersey, and he would smoke a LFD Digger, which I will feature. Oh, that's a, a big cigar. Yeah, yeah and I'll fe I'll feature one of them pretty soon too. I'll get one of them within the next month or so, and um, those things will take you at least around two and a half, three hours of a cigar. And those things are about what how old, what ten inches? Yeah, eight, ten inches. Something. They're enormous so, yeah, cigars. Yeah, th they are, and they got like a sixty ring gauge to them, and you got to take time. you got to commit time to something like that because you don't want to rush a cigar like that. I mean, the guy, I knew he spoke one of them in 45 minutes. Yeah. and That's insane. I mean, yeah. I don't even know what me. His head wasn't spinning. I don't know how he's smoking it that fast, you know. Especially on Maduro. you got the yeah. natural and you got the Maduro between the two of them. and You know, or it might be the Habano, I believe. But at the same time, it's just still, it's just, it's a lot of smoke. It's a lot of tobacco to yeah. intake. And it's something you want to relax with. You don't want to rush yeah. it. Yeah. 45 minutes, I don't know. You know it's, it's a, a lot of nicotine to take in really fast, and that's usually what, you know, what I've always been told, and, I, and I've been led to believe it, it's, it's when you take that too much nicotine in mm -hmm. too fast, is what's really when, these, when people who smoke too fast, they get, their head spins or might even get a little green around the gills, they just, it's because uh, it's smoking too fast and it's the nicotine in their bloodstream. Yep, uh, so, uh, and plus it's always good to have some sort of dark chocolate, always keep water as water. you do it too, you need to cleanse your palate, but really appreciate the flavor to it. Yep. Uh, even just a little bit of coffee if you have some like into it um, You know you, you get the like that cigar high even that yeah. and that's why it's always important a lot of times to eat if you know a meal or something that have in your stomach before you light a cigar too because if you go on an empty stomach you're, you're just basically taking that a strong cigar you guys are in trouble yeah and it's yeah, yeah absolutely mm -hmm. and uh, some of the non-alcoholic beverages that um, I really enjoy with cigars you've probably heard it a hundred times but it's I, I think it's totally true it's uh, root beer, 
Certain mm-hmm. root beers like the pop over. Really one. nice with the cigars. Uh, Dr. Pepper, or yep. cream soda. Um, down yeah. here in the or even southeast, a Coke, yeah, or a Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi or something like that. And down here in the southeast, another big seller is Cheerwine. Oh, Cheerwine, yeah, Cheerwine is yeah. perfect too. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a very distinct soda. It's out of the Carolinas here that we have. And, you know, I'm not a big soda person normally, but when I am working, I definitely enjoy having a Cheerwine every once in a while. If I do indulge. And I don't ever drink soda. I'm more of a coffee or a water yeah. kind of guy on a normal basis. But a cheer wine ever so often is a nice little treat to have with a cigar. Yeah, cheer wine is nice. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, it's got a like a red sweetness to it. A little like Dr. Pepper, but not Dr. Pepper. Yeah, it's, it's like it's Dr. Nice. Pepper meets like, like either like a cherry, cherry coke. coke or something. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's like a cherry coke. But, but it's, it, it's good with, the, with cigar as well. And it's almost like a hint of vanilla to it, too. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's nice, too. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, that's a good change of pace too. If you don't know, want to take a break, maybe you know when you're not you know drinking or whatever, you, uh, root beer is a, a good drink or something like that. Yeah, think of something else. Um, ginger ale, uh, I love ginger ale, but not not, and it's a non-starter for me with the cigar too. Especially, mm-hmm. and that's another thing South Carolina is famous for is uh, there's a uh, ginger ale comes from South Carolina. It's called Blenheim's. Okay. People call it Blenheim, but it's Blenheim's, mm-hmm. and it's a spicy ginger ale. And uh, try that with a cigar, your tongue will be on fire. It's, right. it's hard enough to drink on its own, but yeah, I, I stay away from like ginger ale and certain certain things like that. I don't I don't think mix well with cigars at all because it's just too much on the tongue. Yeah, and then to inhale the smoke for now. And I would come across come across many people with uh, Mountain Dew so much. Yeah, and um, that that one does, doesn't really seem like a, a pleasant one to really have unless you know. And another thing to comment about too, what do you usually like to have paired up with your cigar most of the time? Have you tried different types of sodas even with it? Especially on hotter weather outside too, you know, to be able to drink a, a wine or a warmer be- beverage without any kind of ice to it. Especially yeah. when it's hot outside this time of the year, you know, knowing wh- what is it that you usually like to prefer, um, you know, especially you get these you know bourbons and everything and they yeah. have some heat to them. That's another thing. It's yeah. like you know, I would rather have that at night in the evening if I do or once in a while, especially on a cooler night. Yeah, on a warm night. I'll, I'll put an ice cube into it, and that's it. Just let it kind of dissolve a little bit. It's kind of refreshing, but not too often do I do it. I don't even just have, like, you know, cold coffee. Just put, make the yeah. coffee and just kind of put it in the fridge and just take it out. I don't even bother, like, put ice into it, which is why I water it down. Yeah. And uh, it actually is nice and refreshing. It works well this time of the year. It's really nice. That's the only time, too, is I love iced coffee, and that's I very rarely I drink my coffee black forever, but... That's whenever I have a nice coffee, I occasionally like to put some nice uh, uh, cream or co- milk or even evaporated milk, which is a little richer, and that's that's mm-hmm. nice with it too. When it's nice and cold, and uh, something something that you just made me think about is too is I've always wanted to try with a cigar. I don't think I have is to have uh, an amaretto based drink. Right, would be nice. You yeah. Know, like, uh, what is it they make? The, um, not the God the Godfather, the Godmother. And I don't know. This there's, there's uh, what's what is, I, I can't remember, but uh, amaretto sounds like a yeah, Seems that very be nice with the cigar. Very yeah. smooth, has a lot of like, it's not too, not too strong, but yeah. yet enough that it basically coats your palate and it has a nice flavor. A little sweetness, the almond bean, that's, that's yeah. nice, yeah, yeah. And even like, if you like coffee, even like a French Helica, mm. blend it together too, it's a nice refreshing yeah. cocktail to have with it. That, that sounds good. I'm yeah. thinking, I'm thinking of all these different things that might taste good with it, like a mango sweet tea or something like that. Or, right. Yeah. But you know, and you, you said something too before, and it's true, it's like when a craft beer thing took off, like, how many people realize all that along? I, I, I tell you, the first time I ever t- had a craft beer, I was, I was, I was with a guy um, I worked with, I was working for an English company at the time, and we go, it was in Seattle, and then we had an engineer, an English guy who was, who was stationed up there, Mike, and he was always, you know, giving us a bad time mm-hmm. about how American beer was just so, you know, watery and mass-produced American beer, and, you know, the, the Brits a good uh, red ale or amber or um, a dip of bitter or whatever, you know, like right. a, a pint to the local. And uh, full body, and then he, we were up there. It was this like 1988? And he says, um, "I got to take you to this place." And it was a microbrew. First mm-hmm. time I'd ever even heard or seen a microbrew. It was in Seattle, of course, where the whole coffee thing started too. You know, right? And um, yeah, and uh, then, then, then you know, same thing happened with cigars. Like, well, in the 90s, they had that huge cigar boom. It was just a joke, but kind of put cigars back on the map because what happened was there was so many. A lot of the stuff that came out then was just crap because it was like everybody's making so much money off cigars. Is all you had to do was have a, a lot of guys go down. They'd have uh, some of these growers, uh, and, um, uh, tobacco layers, make a cigar for them, put it in a box, and this and that. You know, wouldn't, wouldn't even be that good of a cigar, and they just throw a fancy label on it. They'd be selling a, a box for a hundred bucks a pop. And uh, when the boom crashed, a lot of the suckers, so to speak, 
got out of the market and just they, they just collapsed and you know again the, the big boys were still the only ones left but again it resurged in the 2000s you know and uh, this time was more serious you got a lot of people who got into the market with the boutiques that was serious right and they started you know getting serious about it going to the growers learning about it and then of course taking it to the next level yep. and using a lot of different types of exotic tobaccos and very good and then get a lot of other people interested in and you know it had a resurgence you know it's uh and as we and it's not it's really good now I, mean, I you know it's it's nice to have a lot more choices that are real choices not right. somebody some fancy label for 100 bucks a box that you know it was different i mean the 90s it was just a, a, the, as the boom came and there really was a lot of crap out there in right. the 2000s the boutiques started coming along and there's just it's nice now because again with the craft beer right? right so many choices now really so many choices if you want um, it's, it's instead of the mass produce um, cigars and you know, it just makes it a lot of fun and I think so, that's why you see like a, a lot of people all ages now smoke or a lot of uh, me you know I mean young younger guys getting in, involved with cigars and, right. and women and all that and uh, you know, it's, it stands I, up more the demographic yeah exactly yeah. exactly and, and the cigars that had a resurgence haven't died it's you know uh, and um, I, I remember what, what was it was Oklahoma City I think uh, what was it? I, I don't know I go so many places you know but an island, what is it, Rock Island or something up uh, an island. Anyway, I went into a place, it was the only place I've ever been. It was a big bar, it was a hookah bar. Huh. We call the students all over the place, but over on this side, there was a little bar, and it was all cigars, and all cigar guys. And it was the most interesting mix, too, because you, the cigar guys, and a lot of them, you know, middle-aged to, to older, and, you know, or right. uh, so on, or just mingling with, you know, uh, the college crowd. Right. And, um, you know, like cigars are the great equalizer anyway, but it was just the first time I'd ever been to a place where it was uh, that crowd with... Uh, the hookah crowd with the, the Scott crowd, and everybody was just having you know a, a good time. So, yeah, uh, so. And, and you come across a few places that are kind of like that. There's a place in Richmond, Virginia called Moda's uh, Cigar Lounge and Bar, and it's actually a restaurant too. They have hookah there as well. Uh. And I smoked hookah, you know, many years ago, but it kind of faded away from me really quick, and I kind of just stuck with cigar. Cigars has been like my my main thing, yeah. and that's why I kind of developed this whole channel. Until it was mostly it was my passion, just kind of like planting a seed and just kind of seeing where it grows and yep. just kind of running with it, and just be able to kind of take all different cigars and just kind of be able to rate them and be able to see you know what I get out of these cigars and see what other people respond back with their comments and see what their experiences are, and vice versa. Because sometimes you may have the same cigar, but yet you can have different batches, you can have different crops, mm -hmm. and different boxes that you get. And it can be shipped out to different parts of the country, to different areas of the world and on the globe. And people can have different taste profiles to it. So even just by, from your chemistry as a human being, from what you're doing, what kind of day you have, can affect what that taste and that experience from that cigar really is compared to you know somebody else on the other side of the, the globe could be smoking that same cigar and probably say, hey, this cigar sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's all a matter of preference. Like, um, with it, with it, the best cigar... The best cigar you ever had is the one you're smoking at the moment, and you know never never burn a guy down because of the cigar he smokes. All you know, it's all a matter of taste, and you right. know, and uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, and, you know, that's another thing. The the the, um, the big the, the the bigger companies, the generals, and the uh, gosh, senior moment. Alts it is, and, and uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and now even Swishers in the game uh, with uh, the who did they buy? Did they buy Jonathan Drew? Uh, uh, yeah, Drew Estate. Yeah, Drew yeah, Estate, yeah. and, and all the all the big guys in uh, uh you know, they is you'd hear a lot of the people would say who, who when they started the boutiques were big, so they get into the boutiques and then why would uh, you know you want to smoke this cigar that's been around for a hundred years that just tastes this way and always tastes this way and this and that and and, uh, and I get that, but the same thing too is a, a, a lot of the credit's got to be given. It's when you think about what tobacco is, this organic product, and it depends on a certain amount of light and water and minerals and soil, and to be able to consistently deliver a cigar. You know, the taste the same right. year after year, or the, you know that profile, or pretty dang close to it year after year is not an easy thing. Right. And, and those, that person who reaches a f cigar all the time, expecting that same thing, they want a cigar to taste a certain way all the time. So they grab this Romeo and Juliet, or they grab this uh, uh, Partagas, or whatever. I mean, you know, that's a good thing too. That's that's a that's that's not an easy thing to do. Right. You know, and just because maybe you're, you're like, oh, it always tastes the same, or it's this or that. No, it's, it's it's not an easy thing to do to, yeah. to reproduce the cigar, make it taste the same. And especially you know, like some of the boxes that you know I, I open up at work there, and you look at through some of the you know the cigars are laid out, and you get some actually you, you, the shades of the wrappers are so different from one another. Sometimes you see a group of them a little bit lighter shade, and you have another one a little bit much darker, and it makes you realize, hey, these are just from two different, at least two different crops. 
Yep. You know, from two different areas, from maybe so much square footage of this entire field on this plantation that they grow it onto. And like you said, the soil, the weather, the amount of precipitation that year that includes. And you have something like, you know, these tropical storms that move through in the, the areas of like where the Dominican and Nicaragua and everything are, and that affects all that. And that's one of the things that makes Cuban cigars really, in a lot of ways, so unique is Cuba holds that average temperature, almost like an actual humidor, that within the valleys of Cuba it has that steady humidity level, and it's like acts as its own humid its own humidor. So that in the valleys of Cuba it actually has a, such a consistency where so many other places the uh, geography is so diverse and unique. And you look at Connecticut, and who would who ever thought that somewhere north is Connecticut, such a temperate zone? And like you said earlier, New Hampshire. New Hampshire is another spot you never expect to have, you know, tobacco to be grown, and especially cigar tobacco. So, and you got states like Pennsylvania, and then you have areas like Kentucky where they're doing a lot more experimenting yeah. with tobacco and aging it and trying to do the whole Kentucky fire cure with it all. And then you have Florida sun grown and, and so forth. Just in the United States, you wouldn't really expect. Mm -hmm. And you, who, who else who knows what, you know, other parts of the world are going to try to expand out to the tobacco crops with. And... There are, you know, so many things out there that are trying to keep tobacco from growing so much, everything, so not to get on the political topic, they try to, you know, here in the United States, you got the FDA trying to, mm -hmm. you know, get their hands involved and stopping it from happening, but all around the globe, I'm sure, and if you're watching from anywhere else around the globe, you know, let us know what else are they doing in your area, are they trying to, you know, try experiment with trying to grow certain areas of tobacco and try and see what they want to try and do something, or are they being stopped? Yeah. That would be pretty interesting to know. It would be interesting to know. Yeah. 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 After all, the, after the XL pipeline, who knows what's next? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Stop. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you can go to Canada, you know, I've uh, had some nice Cuban cigars in, uh, in Montreal, the Casa de los Habanos, which is a really nice place. Uh, but, you know, when you, the, uh, and, and for people who smoke cigarettes up there, the packaging in Canada for, for has had the picture of the nasty pictures of the black lung and everything else on mm -hmm. on the packaging even everywhere for a long long time it doesn't just you know i mean there's certain people it doesn't discourage but i mean uh just the differences and they've been canada they've been doing that in canada forever but you know um, mm -hmm. people still do it and cigars again you know if you smoke a cigar properly you know take the right amount of time with it don't inhale it right don't chew on it all the time keep it in your mouth that way if you enjoy that that yeah. way like chewing the back and all that then you know so be it do it right but that's you know this is why the the number of people who actually ever really get sick from being cigar smokers is, you know, is so small. It's infinitesimal, really. Right. For, you know, the, the number of people who get any kind of cancers or anything like that, you know. But it's, that's as long as you, you know, sip the cigar, smoke the cigar properly. You, you chew on it all the time. It's like having chewing tobacco in your mouth, and then you know, um, you, know you get the, the same kind of risks are involved. So, right. So I'm a big proponent of that. I mean, is because um, people, you know, will, will always try to tie cigars to doing, you know, the same way you smoke a cigarette, and it's just not the same thing. You're not right. smoking the same thing, and you are more likely to have problems, and people who smoke cigars and smoke them the right way, you know, it's it's not the same thing, but they, exactly. that's, to get back to the FDA thing, and that's what it is, 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 is people who just don't get it, trying to lump the whole premium cigar market in with every other kind of tobacco product, right? right. It's just not the same. You know? Exactly. Yeah. The natural leaf, and compared to other things, like chemicals are involved. Right. Yeah. It's a whole different ballgame. I've heard they put saltpeter in cigarettes, and they, that, that that isn't enough reason to not smoke cigarette gas. I mean, <laughs> but uh, who am I to preach? I smoked cigarettes. Uh, I quit many years ago, uh, about 1991 or 1992, and I didn't smoke for that many years, and I never was a really heavy smoker. But I had promised myself when I started smoking cigars four or five years later after I quit cigarettes that um, if I'd ever made me crave cigarettes again, I kind of made this personal promise to myself that if I, because if, if, I didn't know what was going to happen, and I wanted to continue to smoke at cigars and, and I never picked up I still never picked up a cigarette so um, you know that's and I know some guys who use cigars as a means to get off of cigarettes and that's that's great too and if it works that's excellent because uh, right you know so again I'm not being preachy against people who smoke cigarettes it's a free country you want to smoke cigarettes do it right but uh, cigars and cigarettes when the FDA lumps them together it's, not, it's just not right it's right, right. Yeah, so. well guys well thank you so much for watching definitely appreciate it uh, remember to hit subscribe, like, and feel free to comment, especially uh, plenty of topics we discussed on here. Definitely have to, to you know, interact with everything. All right, well, thank you again, and have a wonderful night.
Have a good night. Angel's here. Everything you'd expect from yep. the Fuente. Nice cigar.